Welcome to the Motor Mouth YouTube channel. I'm Zach. I'm Andrea. And we do these questions, coffee and cars regularly. In fact, we put them in all our full length video mm -hmm. reviews. So what we decided to do is Andrea on Instagram. What's the Instagram handle? It's Motor Mouth underscore Andrea. She puts out a questions picture in her feed, yep. leaves it up for 24 hours. We collect the questions and then we answer them here on the video. So let's get into it. Time now for questions, coffee and cars. Your questions from Instagram. For someone who purchases a car with good resale value, say a Honda or a Toyota, does 10,000 kilometers per year and maintains it well, how long should they keep the car from a long-term financial standpoint? Well, I think that if you can keep your vehicle for as long as you can, that is the best financial position to be in. A lot of people buy a new car because they want to save money, say on gas. Mm -hmm. Now, you've, if you've got an affordable Toyota or a Honda, it's probably pretty good on gas already. Yeah. So a lot of people make the mistake, I'm going to buy a new car to save money on gas. My line is, that's an expensive way to save at the pumps. Mm -hmm. So keep the car you have. I would say probably optimally around five years, I would say. I think so. After that, the uh, valuations start to decline, but mm -hmm. it's all off the table now with values of used cars. And I think with a lot of new models today, they come with so much tech that you can actually keep them for a longer period of time and really benefit from the financial savings. Yeah, keeping the car you have and driving it mm -hmm. and paying it off is the best financial advice. Yeah. Do you have any indication of when the chip shortage will end so cars will come with all features? Do you know what automakers are having more or less difficulties in terms of feature returns because of the chip shortage? Well, we've noticed some of that on the vehicles that we've reviewed. Mercedes-Benz had some problems with not having a power tailgate. That was a mm -hmm. biggie. Um, in some cases, heated seats. Well, it's gotten so bad at Toyota, mm -hmm. they have um, reduced worldwide output from their factories. In fact, I read a report that they're going back to a good old key mm -hmm. for the door and a key for the ignition to oh, get man. around, uh, you know, push button start and all that kind of stuff. The yeah. best way to find out, because it moves from company to company, it does. go to one of those big large auto malls and drive around and you'll see which brands have no cars mm -hmm. and which brands do. Uh, the head of Volkswagen said they're going into a particularly rough patch right now with, yeah. su with su supply chain generally. And they had more inventory last year. So uh, we actually had a follower. He, he couldn't get the vehicle he wanted. So he ended up buying a Tiguan because it was available to him. Not the car he wanted. No, not the car he wanted, but he needed a car. So he took the available option. I yeah. don't know if it was his best available option yeah. at the time. But also 360 cameras, uh, ventilated front seats. There's a whole slew of things that uh, people are having trouble getting. Yeah, yeah. Listen, these are what we're calling COVID cars. Mm -hmm. um, are they going to be worth less in the future? I don't know. But you know what? Um, the best car is the one you have. Yeah. I even heard BMW, some are not coming with a touch screen. What? Yeah. Say it's not so. Is the second row leg room difference very noticeable in newer SUVs such as the CRV, Tucson and Sportage compared to something that is smaller such as the RAV4 in length? Yeah, there is a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the, Tucson, the Sportage, and this new CRV offer some of the most second row legroom in the compact non luxury class. So, definitely there is a difference. But we always joke about Mazda, don't we? Mm -hmm. Because if you look at their measurements, they show that they're pretty good measurement wise against something like the Sportage in Tucson. But you get in there. Yeah, I think, uh -uh. I think there's some all kinds of, uh, what the, how should I put it? Um, <laughs> creative measuring going on yeah. when they do the second row leg room. You know, if you want to get a lot of space in a small package mm -hmm. than an electric car, mm. because they push the wheels to the ends, you get loads of space in the back seat, yeah. but the overall size of the car isn't any bigger. Why does there have to be such a disparity between U.S. and Canadian packaging and pricing? Isn't it easier and cheaper for manufacturers to equip the various options the same? And why do the manufacturers price certain cars differently between the Canadian and U.S. cars? Well, as you somebody wonder. who buys things with Canadian dollars, mm. our dollar is worth way less than the U.S. dollar. Yeah. Uh, so you have to factor that in. So they have to adjust the packaging to reflect what the dollar can buy. Yeah. Also, um, depending on the trim, you're right there. There are different features that are offered in Canada than in the U.S. Sometimes on one trim, you might get more in the U.S. and less in Canada and vice versa. I have to say, 
if the packaging was exactly the same and the trims were named the same, our life would be so much mm -hmm. easier because we do both US and Canadian specs. So it would be great. Oh, one thing to mention, Volkswagen. Remember when we drove the Golf R, mm -hmm. the pricing in the US and Canada was very similar. It was actually a better what, deal in Canada. But you're buying with Canadian dollars. Mm -hmm. The other vehicle that had crazy pricing was the Stinger, get it while you can. Oh yeah. Because the Stinger with Canadian dollars had more features and was less expensive than the US car. Now, one thing to keep in mind is um, Americans typically buy bigger vehicles than yeah. Canadians buy, usually one class bigger. So w the car companies in Canada will equip smaller vehicles with more features yeah. because we want a smaller vehicle and we want it with all the toys. Where Americans, if they want more toys, they just buy a bigger car. Since the future is electrification, if you were to purchase an electric vehicle right now, what would you get and why? Hmm, that's a good question. How much mm -hmm. money do I have? How much money do I have, Andrea? Let's say, let's put it at 60,000 Canadian. Canadian dollars. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to buy the Q4, the one we just drove. I like that one. Yeah. yeah what, about, what about getting the, that premium package? Don't you want the extra features? Okay. I think you're going to want the extra features so that you can't get that. Because it's going to put you listen, over I'm gonna 60. Be, I'm going to be blunt with you. There is not an electric car that I've met yet that I go, ooh, I really want this. Yeah. There are some I like. Like I like the key, uh, Korean uh, twins, the EV6 and the Ionic 5. Mm -hmm. I like the ID4. It's okay. The Q4 is good. But I'm not like, oh, I, I got to have one. Okay. Have, so you got, have you met that yet? I, I haven't met that either i think that there are a lot of evs out there that, that we like but none of them are perfect we always seem to find something wrong with them the new gv60 was great price. was too much do you know what i would get if i didn't need an suv i'd get the bmw oh. i4 actually you're right that's the only one i've that's driven the one i would that get that i like but it's but a... we can't get the all-wheel drive model because it's over 60. so we'd have to get well you foiled it andrea i know you know, but that is a Good wonderful car. Good set of winter car. tires. Yeah. You know what, though? The back seat is not that big. No. And it's a sedan and everyone's looking for an SUV. Yeah, you're right. I-4. Mm -hmm. Oh, hell, that's a great car. When you do your vital stats, I see the spread between U.S. and Canadian pricing. On some vehicles, the spread is smaller than others. Is that only because of options in specific cars? Or are some manufacturers just adding a bigger spread to make more money? I guess this is kind of similar to the question we just answered. Yeah, different trims, different packages versus uh, Canada and the U.S. And also, um, like, I don't get it in the U.S., but the heated steering wheel seems to be an interesting feature that doesn't get added sometimes until the top trim in the U.S., whereas in Canada, it's like, oh, yeah, we need a heated steering wheel. Traditionally, if you look at the price differential between Canada and the United States. And then you look at the price difference of, of what the dollar can buy. Often, I know it doesn't look like it because mm. you're just seeing the headline number, but if you actually do the conversion, many times with many mainline cars, the Canadian models, when you factor in the exchange rate, are yeah. actually cheaper. Yeah. So go figure. Best 2020 and up midsize sedan, Subaru Legacy, Toyota Avalon, Camry, or Honda Accord. For me, hands down, Honda Accord. Mm -hmm. I think it just looks sportier. Yeah. I might even get that hybrid that we yeah. reviewed. I really like the hybrid. I mm -hmm. thought the hybrid was fantastic. If you can get your hands on a hybrid, get that. Hyundai and Kia cars are good. Reviews, high ratings from JD Power, etc. They look beautiful and are packed with features, undercut their competition, have very long wait times, meaning they have high demand. And there are so many of them on the roads. But whenever I take a cab, and talk to a driver about cars, they always advise against getting a Hyundai or Kia. And the reasoning is always the same. The engine would start giving trouble after 100,000 kilometers. Yeah, well, but, what, but think about what cabs buy. They buy clapped and, out old cars. Yeah. Right? And the wear and tear. Oh, yeah. And who knows what the maintenance was like, you know, before they purchased the vehicle. I mean, when did they buy it? Was it already five years old? How many kilometers did it have on it? These vehicles should be able to run for 200,000 miles mm -hmm. if they are, are maintained properly. Maintained. But that's why they all gravitate towards the good old Prius, because the Prius will run indefinitely if you maintain it. Yeah. And uh, that's the best taxi cab. So are you buying a cab? 
or are you buying a car? That's it. And the other thing is, we hear this all the time because we do like our Korean cars. Yeah. We rave about them all the time because they're so feature rich and great design. But everybody goes on about, oh, engine problems. It's not yeah. like we, we're reviewing brand new cars, not cars from 2018. So always keep that in mind. And sometimes with recalls, you know, speaking to Volkswagen about this actually, and they said, you know, we recall vehicles because they need to be checked, but not all of them have the problem. And like the dual clutch transmission in the Kia and Hyundai models that have been recalled, it only affects under 1%. Yes, we don't like recalls. They're a pain and we have to go to the dealership. But always keep in mind, it is a precautionary measure as well. Yeah, back to the Kia Sportage for, or Sportage. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I looked this morning for recalls yeah. and it was need to check a bolt on the alternator to see if it's loose. Mm. Now that isn't really, you know, life changing, but it needs to be checked. Do you think sedans are making a comeback? Also, since sedans are already more fuel efficient than SUVs, is it still worth to get the hybrid versions? Mm, good question. Yeah. But well, we were at, sorry, just quickly, uh, yeah. we were at a Toyota event uh, in Texas at head, of, uh, head office in Plano, Texas, and these were U.S. figures, but they said uh, people are reimagining and getting back into compact cars yeah. for your point exactly, fuel economy. And also they're really spacious. I mean, the passenger room in them, especially the rear seat, seat are really good. Um, I would still get the Hybrid Accord myself, get even better fuel economy, but you're right, you don't have to. They all get really good fuel economy. Okay, we have a Honda Civic mm -hmm. and you get in the back seat of that thing, it's got huge leg room, it's yeah. got a big trunk, you can fold down the back seats, it's great on fuel and it's highly reliable. And then you look at something like a Corolla mm -hmm. and then you add in the Hybrid, that's like a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. Which new fun drive manual transmission car with an internal combustion engine would you recommend buying now before it becomes extinct, like the STI? What Must, would you pick? Mustang GT. Mustang, mm. Mustang GT with the performance pack. Make sure you get the magnetic ride control. We're talking about a five liter naturally aspirated V8 engine, manual transmission, rear wheel drive, sounds like thunder and looks badass and is wonderful to drive. Yeah. I want one, Andrea, in blue. In blue. What's your choice? Nissan Z or Z. Z Z. Yeah. I loved it and I love the look of it. I want Absolutely my gorgeous. 400, what is it? I think it's up to 460 horsepower now in the Mustang GT. Well, you get that <clears> and <throat> I'll get this and then we'll be both happy. Oh, and of course, manual transmission. Do you think Canada is missing out on the Toyota Helix, one of the best selling pickups in the world? Well, well, I did a little research on this. Well, I just wanted to say that's the famous Top Gear episode where they tried to kill the pickup truck. Yeah, yeah. They blew it up off the top of a building. They threw it in the ocean. And then, and after all that, they drove it into the studio. So that's the famous episode. I don't think the Helix was ever sold by that name. It was sold as a Toyota pickup truck. And mm -hmm. it was sold between 72 and 1995. Um, but then they discontinued it and they brought in the Tacoma, which has been such a massive seller for Toyota. They decided to tailor the pickup truck because pickup trucks are so monumentally big in terms of sales in North America. Mm -hmm. Best selling vehicle in the United States, F-150. Best selling yeah. vehicle in Canada, F-150. And then all the other variations of pickup trucks fall right behind it. Mm -hmm. So they said, okay, we're going to make a pickup truck for the North American market tailored to North American tastes. The Tacoma is... At and heavily engineered in Michigan for yeah. Americans and bigger people and that's why they've done it. And I owned a Tacoma and mm -hmm. it was great. And I sold it for way more than I paid for <laughs> it. Did. I'm debating on 2023 PHEV Outlander or Highlander Hybrid. I have a family of four and space is a must, but can't decide which one would be best. Any recommendations? Well, the thing about plug-in hybrids is of course they're very efficient mm -hmm. when you have electricity in the battery but often when the battery depletes they're not as efficient as a regular hybrid and andrea of course did the digging because she loves to dig <laughs> uh, what did you find out so we did do some digging and the highlander hybrid gets great fuel economy 6.7 liters per 100 kilometers in the city and 6.8 on the highway 
Now the Outlander gets 3.6 liters equivalent, which when, is when great. It's juiced up, right? Yeah, which is great fuel economy. But with the battery depleted, it's getting like nine liters per mm -hmm. hundred kilometers in the city and 8.7 on the highway. So not fantastic. So you have to make sure that you plug this in, and every time that you go out, you have got the range. It gets 61 kilometers, 38 miles of EV range, which is quite good. Yeah, but then the factor in uh, the cost you know if you're buying a plug-in it's more expensive however you do get a rebate yeah and then you factor in the size the Highlander is bigger yeah it's got more space for everybody everybody front and, second and third row and legroom. so you've got different vehicles so I think for space Highlander hybrid for sure when you look at the pricing the thing is the top trim of the Highlander in Canada the limited I'm just giving Canadian numbers is uh, you know up around fifty four thousand dollars, which is a middle trim of the Outlander PHEV. But the Outlander PHEV gets the federal rebate in Canada of five thousand dollars, so it brings your cost down. Well, if you live in Quebec, they give you the car for free. <laughs> Not quite, but pretty, it's a good pretty, rebate. Pretty damn close. Question more for Andrea. When did you start doing this full time? I know you made appearances here and there early on, but now you're full time on the channel, which is awesome. Well, thank you for that. So we, start, we started the channel, or I started the channel back around 2012. Yeah. 2011, 2012. And good old Zork did the videos on his own, and yeah. he was kind of lonely. <laughs> <laughs> and every once in a while I said, hey babe, come with me and let's do the video uh, together. Yeah. And then uh, sporadically, I would say, Andrea came and she did more luxury cars and SUVs. Mm -hmm because that's what we like. Mm -hmm. and kind then, of like a family style, right? Yeah, yeah. and it yeah. was uh, December 2019. I was looking at all of the metrics. This was over the Christmas holiday area mm -hmm. uh, time. And I said, Andrea, guess what? All the videos you're in do better than good old <laughs> Zork. So I said, so we, we, we go for our walk with the dog all yeah, the time. And I yeah. said, listen, let's try and do like two a month. Yeah, so the thing was is that Zach was still traveling. Manufacturers were inviting him on different launches. And like so every I, week, yeah. Yeah, so I said, Tim, you're gone a lot, but sure, let's try and commit to doing two videos uh, a month starting January of 2020. Then what happened? Then COVID hit. March of 2020, I remember everything was shut down. Friday, March 13th. Mm -hmm. And Zach and I looked at each other again on our walk and we said, Let's just revamp the channel. We what? didn't even know that we were going to have two years of really no traveling, that we were able to establish the channel the way that we wanted it. You know, when we go for our walks, it's always hand in hand. It's not. <laughs> Because we do have a dog with a leash. And, <laughs> yeah, so, and usually a coffee or yeah, something. Yeah, but it's true. So the a COVID for many people sucked terrible, bad. Terrible. But for us, it actually allowed us to really work on the channel yeah. and really work on our formula and what we're doing. And there was no distractions at all. No, so it was we just, just him and I we all just together. put our heads down and worked, 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 and, and it worked out. Yeah, and it, I mean, best decision that we have ever made for the channel hands down. Um, and because it bought us two years of time to establish the channel, the manufacturers started inviting both of us on trips that they really valued the kind of he said, she said review. So we do all these extra videos. We decided to break up the work. So I do all the shooting and editing. Mm -hmm. And uh, Andrea does a whole pile of research. So when we hit the ground, uh, running. We have all the information and all the shots. And I do all of our social media. I do yeah. all of our Instagram, Facebook. Oh, by everything. the way, if you want to follow on Instagram, where do you go, Andrea? Motormouth underscore Andrea. So you get a sneak peek every week of what we're reviewing on the channel when the videos drop. And then, of course, our questions, coffee and cars standalone segment. Get your questions in. If you are not on Instagram, no problem. Zach does a live show every Sunday and you can send some questions in to him. All right. We'll see you next time.